In today's video, we're going to be talking about special trig limits. Special trig limits. What are special trig limits? Well, there are some limits that we can solve without having to do all the math because there's a certain identity that we can use to solve the limit. This will be much easier to explain visually, so let's get started. There are exactly two special limits that we can use, and I'm going to write them over here. This is limit number one, the limit as x approaches zero of sine ax divided by ax is equal to one. And the other special trig limit is the limit as x approaches zero, one minus cosine ax divided by ax, and this is always equal to zero. Let me explain what all this means. So first of all, we have the limit as x approaches zero of sine a of x divided by a of x, and that always equals one. a is a constant, and this constant has to be the same within the sine of a of x and on the bottom a of x. If we can get our limit into this form, this will always just equal one. Instead of plugging in the messy numbers and doing all that work, we just already know what it equals. It's very convenient. And the same applies for this limit, the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine ax divided by ax. Once again, this ax and that ax have to be the same thing in order for this entire limit to just equal zero. Instead of plugging in all your numbers and doing all the math, we already know what this is going to be equal to. Today we're going to do one example of each of these special trig limits, and let's start with the sine example. And just for fun, let's use the green pen. Why not? The example we're going to start with is the limit as x approaches zero of sine of 3x divided by x. What is this limit? First, I want you to notice that x is approaching zero, which means we cannot just substitute in x to solve this problem. If we were to just substitute in x, we would get zero on the bottom and we cannot divide by zero. So we're gonna have to use a different strategy. We need to make this and this be the same thing. And in other words, we need to make this x on the bottom turn into three x. How might we do that? And more importantly, how do we do that so that we don't change the value of this function? That's a really good question. Well, just like in my last video about rationalizing, we could do something where we technically multiply by one, but we're actually manipulating the function to just be a little bit different, but still have the same value. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this entire inside function by three divided by three. In other words, times three on top and times three on bottom. And this changes our limit into the limit as x approaches zero of three sine three x divided by three x. And notice that we basically just multiply by one. Three divided by three is just one. And let me put a little multiplication symbol there just to clear that up. But we're still not there yet. If we were to still plug in zero, we would get three times zero on the bottom. And that is, well, still equal to zero. Plus we have this pesky three on top, so we're not even in this form yet. So how can we get rid of this three? Obviously we can't just divide it out again. That would undo what we just did here. Well, this is actually a scalar. And if you watch my video about properties of limits, we know that we can pull scalars out to the limit and to the front. So this changes our limit to three times the limit as x approaches zero of sine of three x divided by three x and parentheses. And now we are in the form of sine ax divided by ax. Isn't that wonderful? So now we know that this entire limit is just equal to one which means that we just have the problem three times one, which is equal to three. And that is the limit of our problem. Let's do one more example of this limit, but instead we're gonna use the red pen. So in this one, we're trying to find the limit as x approaches zero of sine of four x divided by five x. What is this limit equal to? Well, you may notice that if we were to just plug in zero again for our x values, we would get five times zero on the bottom, which is equal to zero, and we still cannot divide by zero. That hasn't changed since last time. But our x on top and our x on bottom are very similar. So we just need to change this into that. In other words, we need to make them the same in order to get it into this form. What can we multiply this by on top and bottom in order to make this and this the same thing? Let me show you. If we multiply this function times four fifths and four fifths. Remember four fifths divided by four fifths is just equal to one. We didn't actually change the value of our function. Our limit now turns into the limit as X approaches zero of four fifths sine four X, four X divided by four X. 
Now we're getting somewhere, but once again, we still have this pesky four fifths in the front that prevents us from getting into this form. But just like in the last problem, we can pull this out to the front knowing our rule of scalars or that property of limits. So now our function is just equal to four fifths times the limit as x approaches zero of sine four x divided by four x. And now that we're in this form, this form up here, we know that this inside function is just equal to one, which means our whole problem is just four fifths times one, which is equal to four fifths. And that is the limit of our problem. Now let's do one example using this version of our special trig limit, the cosine version. In this example, we have the limit as x approaches zero of 10 times one minus cosine of x divided by, divided by x. What is this limit equal to? Now you may notice that we're almost in this form. We're not all that far off. We just had this pesky 10 at the front and it turns out we can still pull this constant value to the front of our limit. So this now turns into 10 times the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine of x divided by x. And just like before, we have the same x value inside the cosine as on the bottom. In other words, it satisfies this condition which means that this is all equal to zero. So now our function is just 10 times zero, which is equal to zero. And that is the limit of this function. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick lesson. If you wanna learn even more ways to solve limits and especially the tricky ones, consider clicking here on this video where I'll teach you how to rationalize limits. Consider subscribing if you'd like more math help because I am your guy for all of Calculus One and I will see you in the next video.